Recording started. All right, recording is going. Okay, so how is everybody um, doing? Did you guys get your 1.01, um, 1.02, and 1.03 quizzes done? Or yes, yeah, okay, so some of you, yes. Let me show you where to go to find that and the recording, okay? So I'm going to uh, screen share real quick. All right, can you guys see my screen? Give me a green check if you can see my screen real quick. All right, AJ can, okay, very good. All right, so your course should look something like this, okay, when you log in. Um, now, if you see here, somebody was asking me, like, hey, I didn't see the recording posted. It's going to be on the announcement page right here. See, I just said on the 31st, we had last class was uh, 1030. So on 1031, I posted that and put it right here. Okay, so I just upload to YouTube and post it. And then um, I have the Google Calendar right there. You can also, so you can see what's going on. So like uh, 2.04, 2.05. I say they're due today, but honestly, I don't put in zeros till the coming Monday. Okay, so you should have some time to be able to do that. And then you got quizzes uh, 3.06, uh, 3.07. Okay, let me show you where to go real quick to get to these quizzes, okay? So if you come up here, you go to content, and I'm going to scroll down. So you have unit one, okay? So unit one, lesson one, had all of these right here, okay? So this is where your quizzes are. So you just click the video, watch the video, take the quiz. You can take the quiz as many times you want to get the grade that you like. Okay, I have some of you guys that are flying through it already. As I said before, if you want to pass this class off quickly, go ahead for it. I'm more than happy for you to do it. Okay, so lesson two and lesson three we're going over today. So lesson two, you just have to watch this quick video. So let's click on it to see what it looks like. Um, right here, opportunity costs and trade-offs. That's what we're going to be talking about. Just push play, watch it. I bet you it's not even very long. Let's see how long it is. 2 minutes, 57 seconds. I'm sure you can watch that and be able to handle it. And it's pretty animated and stuff. And then you got to answer those questions in the quiz. Okay? Same thing for lesson 3. Uh, as I said before, if you want to go ahead, I have everything uploaded for you guys to do that. And you guys can just cruise through it. Okay? So that's where you're going to find the quizzes and everything right here. So after, So next Monday when I put in zeros... Okay, you should be done with um, all of unit one already. Okay, so we have five units. That means we're one-fifth of the way done. Okay. All right, let me stop that real quick. Go back to my screen here. Uh, any other questions on what to do, how to pass this class, anything like that? Okay, AJ's all good. Anybody else, any questions? Okay, so I said I put in zeros every Monday. Um, just get done what what it says to on the content or the Google Calendar. Okay, and I'll post that with the recording on the announcement board. This recording. Okay, we ready to roll? Let's roll. Get done. This is probably your last class of the day, right? Okay. All right. So we're going to talk today about trade offs and opportunity cost. So it's basically. Um, as we're going through here, a trade-off, okay, uh, because people can't have everything they want, and so that's kind of what we talked about real quick about being rich, right? Because we can't have everything we want, we have to face what we call trade-offs or alternative choices, okay? I'd love, love, love to go down and, you know, buy, We talk, I think we talked about Tesla last time, right? Love to go down, buy a Tesla, drive that Tesla around, okay? Nope. Well, I'm stuck with driving a Hyundai Sonata. Okay, so I, I can't do it because of certain things, right? So other trade-offs that you might have to do, okay? You might have to uh, go to school. Like I went to school for about eight years, okay? I have my master's degree. I have all these things. But that was a trade-off. I had to trade off time, that kind of stuff. So then here's another thing. So opportunity cost. There's a difference, okay? So people often think of terms 
as cost, like how much does something cost? Okay, well, it costs like five bucks, right? Um, if you are an economist, okay, or looking at things from the financial aspect of things, um, they don't think of cost as just in terms of how much something costs in time. Uh, cost often means, you know, price, but it could also mean um, something else. It could mean uh, a choice, one choice over another, okay? Uh, it could also mean time, okay? So as I said before, uh, going to school is a huge benefit, okay? We're going to talk more about going to college or going to technical school or something like that. You may not want to do it, but there's a huge trade-off for it, okay? You trade your time and some of your money right now, and you're going to make more money in the long run. We're going to do some math equations as we're going through these classes and that show you if you go, if you just get a high school diploma, okay, which I'm going to assume everybody in here is going to, period. You're going to get a high school diploma. You're going to make like, it was like eight to $10,000 more than somebody that doesn't get a high school diploma, okay? If you have some college, this is just some college, you're gonna make five to five to $6,000 more than somebody that got a high school diploma, okay? So you can see those cost benefits that happen there. Okay, so we have to go through what's called basically a decision-making uh, model, okay? Uh, so you have to choose not always what's easy. Um, you have to you have to make uh, a decision model grid is one that's more difficult approach to problem solving. Okay, so as you're thinking about school or future things, uh, investments as well, where you want to put your money, um, you might not always have access to it. So let's talk about that real quick. So if I want to go and make more money through like a bank or something like that, I may have to put it in a long-term savings and I can't get that money out, okay? So that's kind of a difficulty, a decision-making thing that I can, that you can do, okay? Okay, so let's go over this decision-making model real quick. Um, so recognize and define the problem and the opportunity, okay? So usually they're kind of the same thing, okay? There's a problem, let's say uh, I wanna buy a car. Okay, so do you, any of you guys have a car right now? Do you have any of your license driving a car? Yeah, okay, all right. Do you have your own car or is it your parents' car? Your own? Oh, very good. Okay, parents. Okay, so let's say you want to get your own car. And Carol can help us out on this because she has her own car. And how did she do it, right? So that's the problem. You don't have a car and you need that opportunity to get a car, okay? So let's go through that. So we gotta gather relative information. So how much does it cost to own a car, okay? You have, first you have to get your driver's license, okay? If you need to get your driver's license, just talk to me, the driver's ed guy, okay? So uh, get your driver's license, okay? That costs money, okay? You have to, uh, once you get your, uh, that you need insurance for your car, you need to put gas in your car. You have all of those things that cost money. Okay, so we're gonna gather that information. Okay, the next thing is we have to uh, diagnose the the causes and that kind of stuff. So, how do you fund having your own your car, or driving your car? So some of the some of you guys with your own car there, you're gonna have to tell us how how do you finance your own car? Okay, so it just says you have a job. Okay, where do you work at? Or you just could say industry, you don't have to do that. BK, I'm guessing that's Burger King. Very good, okay? Yeah, so you have to do that to get your money, okay? So somebody works in real estate, fantastic, okay? Um, so you need to find ways in order to get that, that money. So you have to gather that information. How much is it going to cost? How can I get there, right? So real quick, real quick, uh, AJ, so what did you have to do to get to to work at Burger King. You had to get a what permit? Remember doing that? Taking the whole uh, whole test? Food handler's permit, okay? That costs money. You had to, to study for it and you had to get your food handler's permit, okay? 
I don't know any prerequisites you had to do to, to get your job. Does anybody else have a job out there? Where you're working? Okay, me, good. Anybody else? Okay, lifeguard. Lifeguard, you have to have some training, right? Underneath you. Okay. Okay, trucking company in a warehouse. Okay, very good. Yeah, yeah. The, I I could never pass the safety guard, the lifeguard thing. I sink. <laughs> I can swim. I just probably can't save anybody else's life. So, very good. I mean, that takes a lot of stuff to get training and and stuff like that. Okay. So you had to give up some of your time, some of your your money possibly in the future to be able to get that. So this is what we're talking about. When we're talking about the decision making model. Okay, so we may have to develop all our alternatives. Okay, as we're talking about a car, um, as I said, I, I I'd like a Tesla. I think that'd be nice. But I had to do an alternative. What kind of alternative could you do from a car? Or you know, what's your favorite car? You might have to go lower on a car, right? If you can't get the the thirty five thousand dollar car, you have to get a two thousand dollar car. Okay, maybe you're riding around a moped right now. Okay. But you have to get your motorcycle endorsement to do that. Okay, so it takes a little bit more, but it saves you money in the long run, and so you can build up money to get other things. Okay, so then you can evaluate those alternatives, understand the consequences. Like, I'm not sure. Like, I actually do want to get a little motorcycle to putter around on, but my wife's scared because people don't see motorcycles, right? So that would be a, a consequence, knowing the consequence of those things. Okay. But you save on gas, so that's another consequence, right? It's a better one. You save on gas, but there's more likelihood that you have severe injury, right? Okay, so then you have to choose and decide, and then you have to implement it. You have to actually invest in that situation, right? So if I'm going to get my motorcycle license instead and get this little mini bike that I want to get, I want to get this thing called the Honda Grome. It's pretty sweet. You'd have to look it up. It's like this little mini bike. I want to ride around on. Pretty sweet. Anyways, so you have to implement it, right? So I have to put money into that. I have to probably go out and get my motorcycle endorsement. I have to get some training underneath me of how to ride on the road a motorcycle, okay? But then also a consequence too, I was thinking, is I don't want to ride in the rain in it, you know? So maybe I should stick to uh, just a cheaper car, okay? And then you got to evaluate and control it. So if I get that car right, and maybe I have a payment on it, I still have to keep my job to fund being able to have that car, right? So that's the decision-making model, okay? And you're rational. They call it rational because you're not putting emotion into it. If you're putting emotion into it, I'm going to go out and buy that $35,000 car and say, ah, what the heck, right? And then it's probably going to come get repoed from me. Okay, so we have to set priorities. Okay, so is the car really that important? And think about it. I mean, you can always use a bus, get a bus pass. Okay, nope, all right. So we have to think of things in um, a certain model. So Stephen R. Covey came out with these things. Um, so, hey, do you have a bus pass? Yeah. So sometimes when I have to travel down, I, I take the train, you know, instead of instead of a car right so we have things that are urgent not urgent important and not important okay is what he says so you want you live most of your life in the urgent and important um, but you want to put yourself in like the not urgent but still important category okay so what's something that's not urgent right now that is still really important the one I like to do is like health okay a home okay well homes kind of urgent and important a little bit if you don't have a home right so that would move to the urgent important but I see where you're coming from so not urgent and important would be like long-term savings okay um, being able to plan for retirement okay so it's really really important but it's not urgent right now I don't have to worry about it we don't want it to move to the urgent category and I don't have any money when I'm I'm there for retirement so we want to focus on a lot of this, what they call quadrant two, and be able to uh, get work on those things that, that we need. 
Another thing, as I said, was is health. Okay, um, if you spend all of your time working and you don't plan for your health and and eat right and do those things that you need to do, well, you're going to have health problems and you're going to have to pay for the thing. I think there's I can't kind of remember the quote. It's something like uh, you spend your whole life gaining your wealth and then you spend your whole the rest of your life spending your wealth to gain your health, something like that. Anyway, so you got to work on those quadrant two things. So think about what maybe goes in that quadrant two for you. You know, a lot of it is those things that, as I said, are not important right now, like retirement or stuff like that. Um, I would look all you guys, what I've done for my kids actually already, who are six, three, and one, I've already started to set aside to them um, retirement vehicles. Okay, I'm putting money into them each month to be able to get them uh, get them money okay so something you might want to think about think about Roth IRAs think about things like that and we'll talk about those different investment materials that will help you help you out in the long run okay and it's basically kind of like investing in the stock market but uh, a little bit more conservative right with the Roth okay so let's talk a little bit more about um, they want me to go over these things about catching your vision in your life, okay? So it's what do you want to be, okay? I know it's hard to think right now when you say you're living with your parents, you know, like it's just having friends, that kind of stuff. But what what are you going to be, okay? Who are you, okay? Are you going to uh, – what do you want to do for a job, right? Um I never thought I'd be a teacher when I was there, right? But I love being a teacher, especially online, because it's like flexible, right? And I can kind of do things and work on things, work on some of my business ideas that I have off to the side. So what do you want to do, right? If you don't have this, you're going to just basically thrown in to whatever situation comes upon you, okay? So I really want you to think about that. Does anybody know what they want to do after they – they graduate from high school. Do you have any thoughts? Okay, so being a mechanic. All right. So how do you are you going to accomplish that? Are you going to go to a tech college, something like that? Okay, someone's going to join the military. Very good. Uh, take a long nap. Do you uh, do that? But it gets gets boring after a while. So I love fixes. See how it works. Cool. A baker and do computer science. Cool. Yeah, I like computer stuff. And that's one thing I'm like in technology, right? I was able to merge the two. So I'm going to say Air Force. Very good. I've thought about teaching in the medical field. Okay. Very good. Yeah, you probably have to have at least a bachelor's for like the medical field, you know. You can get into the medical field like a CNA and then kind of work your way up that way. Um but yeah, you got to do something that you like too. You know what I mean? It's not all about, you know, money. It, it is about money in a way. Like you got to make enough money to live and be happy, but you want to be able to enjoy what you do, right? When you go to work. So, very good. Good ideas there. Okay. So, the next one is you want to evaluate your financial health. So, one of the big things to do is kind of make a budget, okay? So, as we kind of did with the car, right? We list all the things we need to do for a car. Well, how much is a car payment on two thousand dollars? Okay. How much is insurance, especially at your young age? It's super, super expensive. Okay. I used to work in the insurance industry and didn't like it, but it, you know, it's a lot of money for uh, for young drivers. Okay. So see what you need to do and determine what you need to do to get to where you need to. You may have to do that cost, that trade-offs, okay? You may have to take out some student loans. You may have to do some things to get where you need to do. I, I have friends that are uh, doctors or have got advanced degrees, and they're like $100,000 in student loan debt, okay? But they were able to... They're, they're getting out of it because they're making quite a bit more money. It's going to take them a while to get out of that debt. But at the same time, they were able to to do that, that trade-off, okay? So 
but you just got to do it, right? I had I had a quite a bit. I had a little bit of student debt, uh, but I was able to get get it all paid off fairly quickly because it wasn't too much. Okay. Step three: define goals. Okay. What's your personal and family goals? Um, so that's the thing. Like, family comes into play a lot. As I said, I have three little kids. Um, I'm not traveling the world with three little kids right now, right? I'd love to, um, especially with the flexible schedule, like be able to travel a little bit more. Um, but kids are expensive, so think about that, right? Uh, if you're gonna find a significant other, right, y your your goals have to kind of align with each other, right? Uh, attach how much their your goal goals are gonna cost, okay? Um, I know a lot of people out there particularly in Utah they take off like on uh, missions or whatever you know um, so sometimes I'm already married and it's already way expensive yep very true okay and have a child on the way okay <laughs> that, that's a lot man that's a lot okay yep kids are expensive you just but try to plan that out okay so this this class is gonna be awesome for you I think is you're kind of planning and budgeting out and doing that cost trade-off right um, how are, are you and your spouse going to be able to to budget and make enough there you know for for everything you need okay and then you determine those obstacles okay that come in your path so you can kind of avoid them go that way uh, medical bills that's another one that you'll look at kids they're born expensive <laughs> okay uh, develop a plan of action, okay, but make sure it's flexible, okay. Um, I know we all have plans, but they deviate sometimes, okay. I have a plan of like trying to get out of certain debt that's maybe possibly really high, but sometimes I have to say, oh, I had this medical expense happen or I had this happen, and so I didn't get to it, but you just do the best you can, okay. But be proactive. I think that's the biggest thing. If you think about these things, it's going to help you in in the the later run. Okay. All right. Oh wow, that was it. <laughs> I went through that fast. <laughs> All right. Do you guys have any questions? Okay, about uh, what's going on, what you need to be doing. Okay, this week you need to get done lesson two and lesson three. Okay, so uh, two point zero four, two point zero five. And then 3.06, I think those are the quizzes that you need to do for the rest of this week. It'll tell you a little bit more about opportunity costs and trade-offs. Does anybody else have any any other things? I like to be kind of an open book. I know my, my parents were very, uh, um, they, they didn't like to tell me about finances, right? They were, they were scared I, and like there were sometimes there we were really really poor and there are sometimes we did really really well you know but they would never tell me about finances but if you guys have any questions about finances about how things work all that kind of stuff we're going to be going through this this class and it's really about how you know if you have questions about how to buy a car how to buy a house how to you know how do I get money for college that kind of stuff we're all there same with your parents. They're tight-lipped about it. Yeah, I, I like to be a little bit more open. And I'll, I'll tell you, like, things that you – I think they're are good because I think it's being open and being able to talk about it with somebody I think is a, a really good thing about these finances. Then you don't make the – I'll tell you my stupid things that I do, you know. Like, I'm not, I'm not super smart, but I at least <laughs> – I've had some some dumb things I did with money. I had some other things. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop the recording, but I'll answer any questions, guys. <laughs>